So this is going to be Repro vs. Wizard. Uh, the map is Lost Temple. Uh, Rec Rule, of course, uh, would be the one who won WCG USA 2003. Uh, in the Grand Finals, he was actually eliminated with a 3-3 record in the group stage. Um, and the other American who qualified that year was a Sem. And he's going to be going against my younger brother, playing under the nickname POC Squared, which stands for Power of Cheese Squared. Um, and my younger brother being Wizard. Um, <coughs> who competed in the StarCraft and then mostly made his name in the uh, Warcraft 3 scene. So I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, game started. So up here as the blue Terran, we have uh, Rec Rule. Uh, Rec Rule again, uh, fourth place um, in the 2002 CompUSA Game Fix Million Man LAN event. So not this online tournament portion, but there was a LAN event that CompUSA held a few months afterwards that Rec Rule would take fourth place in. Um, and he was also the first place again in the WCUSA 2003 with an average APM for these online CompUSA games, uh, 123. This particular game, he's playing with 127 APM. And his image, again, for the player that's behind it, the oldest image I can find of Rec Rule is the following one located here. Uh, here as the uh, green teal Protoss is a uh, wizard playing his POC squared. He was uh, second place in WCG USA 2002 with first place going to Froz and third place going to Ware. Uh, he was also fifth place in this online event, uh, winning him $500. Um, and his average APM is 144. This particular game he's playing under an APM of 142. Um, some pictures of him. This is him at WCG 2002. He's the one in the center with Ware on the left and Froz on the right. And from his Warcraft 3 days, this is him uh, from the Chinese Akon 4 tournament where he won a car thanks to the power of his lucky pants, uh, the Tetra style underneath it. That is just the pinnacle of style so far ahead of his time. Um, you can see some close-ups of those amazing pants and right here on the left or if you or uh, right here you can just imagine how much skill that would give one to wear pants like that so um, you can see here uh, standard scouting power patterns for both players uh, since Wizard had predicted or had uh, scouted where the Terran was right away. He was able to get in before the wall off was completed and therefore able now to get valuable information and will likely be able to continue to micro around to get that information until a Marine is built. And it looks like Rec Rule is just now going to be finding where Wizard's uh, starting base is for the first time. His SCV finally making its way around to the uh, Protoss base. And he will find a pretty standard opening so far. Protoss Assimilator, Cybernetics Core, and a Gateway. A single two Marines have not been built, ensuring that this probe will vacate the present premises. Uh, Wizard trying to sneak it back around, trying to hide it in a corner. Uh, I don't know if Rec Rule saw it or not. It doesn't look like he did. Uh, he's actually moving out with both of his Marines. That's kind of surprising. Uh, let's take a look over here. Oh, there's a Terran bunker being placed. Um, that's actually pretty unusual. Uh, so it looks like Rec Rule is going to go for some type of unusual containment style. So unlike <laughs> Froz, who always did very, very solid standard openings, and Frost would always try to play very consistently, be very predictable. Rec Rule, especially because he was a random player, so I think I forgot to mention that uh, again, is that Rec Rule always played random, uh, tended to use a lot more cheesy strats, strategies that uh, were less solid, but could also pay off big rewards if they worked out well. So we have uh, this SCB up here and going into the bunker. Um, going to be ready to repair that should uh, Wizard try to break out of here. And Wizard has decided to go for a uh, Templar Archives. 
So uh, basically going to likely be going for DTs, try to use DTs, either a DT drop or a DT attack to try to get out of the situation that he finds himself in. Meanwhile, Rec Rule uh, is going to go for uh, Terran Factory, and he is apparently t anticipating possibly either drops or DTs and going for a Terran Engineering Bay. Uh, oh wait, actually never mind, this is why. I have somehow missed this. I need to have learned to watch my main map better myself is the fact that Wizard had proxied a uh, gateway outside with that probe that he had snuck beyond Rec Rule. And this gateway indicates the fact that he will be doing proxy DTs. So in other words, he realized, uh, Wizard realized that Rec Rule might be committing a lot of resources to that ramp there. So he ended up using that initial probe that he scouted with to build this pylon over here and this gateway over here to try to get these DTs out. The first DT is out on the field and that Marine does give his life. The pylon will not go down before completion. Uh, another DT has come out. Uh, it looks like he's not even going to bother destroying this bunker. He's just going to go straight for the base, would be my assumption. And this Dragoon will clean up this empty bunker now. Second DT will not finish before this gateway is depowered. And it looks like Rekvo will have a missile turret up, so this attack will not be able to go any further into his base, um, successfully making sure that uh, while he had to give up on his original strategy of just the ramp containment, uh, Wizard's counter cheese has now failed. So uh, Rekvo starts out with a cheese of his own, Wizard answers with a cheese of his own, and the two cheeses have um, not borne f anything, really. So. Uh, Wizard's now trying to catch up by expanding, uh, so essentially uh, realizing that his cheese has failed, just trying to take a secret base that you would normally expect the Protoss to expand to their natural, hoping that the Terran player is not paying enough attention and won't notice that you've taken a base um, outside the natural itself. In addition to that, there is one, addition, one other reason why you'd want to take uh, an expansion further away, is that it means that it's harder for the Terran to handle your DTs, because uh, they only have so many scans, and since they only have so many scans and so much energy, uh, they might be have to, if they try to attack your natural, for instance, they might not have scans for uh, your DTs coming in from a different angle or attacking from a different entry point. Uh, so this DT here is preventing Rectoral from building any towers or expanding, so Wizard's basically just using them now to establish his expansion uh, and to also stop Rectoral from getting expansion of his own. So any push would first have to kill this DT, make their way down to one of the two bases, and then uh, have enough scans to be able to hold off a constant influx of DTs is the general idea. So he's using a very light army to get these expansions up. Uh, it looks like spider mines are being researched um, for Rec Uh That DT is scanned and cleaned up finally. There is a second DT layer, so Wizard had split out two DTs to have two layers that Rec would have to get through. Uh, spider mines being laid, but the DT is already beyond them. And that SCV will not get a tower up. So once more, just preventing expansions, preventing Rec Rule from taking that expansion. Uh, that DT only hair part of the way. Uh, just using them as a time buying mechanism while getting up expansions himself and using this as a delaying tactic. Um, so this way, uh, when Rick will finally does break out of his base, he's got, Wizard already has several established uh, bases himself and can pump out a bunch of units to stop any push that he might try to do. Uh, so Rekro is likely going to lay a mine here, prevent any expansion from this place, and just let him know if Wizard does try to take that. Um, <clears throat> Wizard, meanwhile, is just simply, uh, yeah, like I said, just not much of a ground army. Um, a little bit of one, but not a whole lot. Mostly just relying on those DTs as his entire force. Uh, we do have a science facility, so this I think will be the only game, maybe in the replay pack, that will have a science vessel built. Uh, science vessels not being used in TBP during this time generally, um, along with, as I mentioned several times before, arbiters not being used as they were considered a junk unit and not worth building. But in this case, the um, science vessels being used less for the EMP and more just for detection, more just because Wizard's being very annoying with his DT setup. 
and uh, Requel doesn't have enough scans in order to really deal with it as he never got his natural expansion up and ready. He was never able to establish that. So food count, we're at 77 to 60 uh, food. And looks like things are quieting down. I think uh, Rugpool is just going to push out once he gets that science vessel going. So I'll show the information again of the players. So we have Rugpool, a well-known person for um, Team Liquid, playing in this CompUSA $20,000 tournament in the latter portion, trying to qualify top 64 to get a, a shot at that bracket prize money. Uh, against uh, <coughs> my younger brother Wizard, who uh, is also um, in the same place trying to get to that uh, top 64 bracket. And in this turn, I would actually finish fifth place uh, to uh, win $500. And it looks like Rec Rule is indeed doing his push out now. Uh, Science Vessel is ready. Um, just mostly makes the DTs mostly useless now, as they will be easily detected. Uh, he may be able to do some shenanigans uh, when the science vessel isn't around, but there should be enough scans that uh, their time in the game has basically passed. So now it's going to become a question of, was there enough time bought for Wizard to build up a large enough army to crush this push out by Wreckworld? Or is Wreckworld's push going to be too much for Wizard to handle? Uh, Food-wise, it is 72 to 102, so the uh, supply count does favor Wizard. And Wizard has decided that with that army moving out, he's going to actually try to counterattack attack Wreck Rule, which may not be the best idea with this being blocked off, but he's giving it his all. Uh, first, Supply Depot does fall. Uh, some uh, The shuttle does display some forces up here to try to take away the, uh, the cliff siege tanks. Those do fall, but more sea tanks are coming. The army of Wreckpool is returning. And it looks like this uh, attack by Wizard was indeed ill-advised. Uh, his supply is melting like butter. Um, he might be able to side up these two dragoons. Nope. They went onto a suicide shuttle. So uh, the supply counts have now evened up 82 to 65, um, a little bit closer than they were before. Uh, but Terran's army is generally worth a little bit more and a lot of wizard supply is currently being used by um, probes in its various expansions. <coughs> and out comes the siege tank push. Uh, it looks like uh, Wizard is floating about 1,200 minerals, so he's not being as efficient in the spending as he could be. Uh, but he's going to have to hold this off and if he wants to win this game. It doesn't look like this hell at speed either. He never even bothered to invest in that. These are slow lots. Lazy slow lots trying to make their way across the battlefield. Uh, use of um, defensive matrix rather than EMP. Again, EMP not being something that anybody really used. And it looks like Wreckful is just going to take his army and take his expansion at this point. Not going to try to push it forward. Uh, so with the expansion, the game basically evens up. Um, in the PVT matchup at this point, you generally want it to be Terran number bases plus one. Uh, so that basically puts uh, Wizard at three bases to two, which is generally where your <coughs> most PVT games would end up in terms of the Protoss actually being able to win. Uh, judging by the fact there are SCVs, uh, he might be going to take the island, or he might be going for a drop where he's going to build a lot of towers on the back of Wizard's Ledge. It looks like from the angle it's going to be the drop, uh, rather than the actual island expansion. Yep, indeed. So the goal here will likely to be to build a lot of muscle turrets, prevent uh, anything from getting into this area, and continue to ferry units over here to take out this expansion without a direct encounter. Wizard, meanwhile, is moving out his army to the center of the map, unaware of what is going on behind his bases.
He might be actually trying a push against a well fortified Terran position, not something you'd ever recommend doing. Uh, nice use of defensive matrix to eat up a lot of the attack of the zealots there. Um, it does look like Wizard is going to break through this line tank line though. Tank line is falling. SCVs have been pulled. This single siege tank here with 7 kills here looks like it may be a hero though. It's starting to hold the line. Doesn't get to 8. Uh, siege tank up there and a siege tank from the high ground likely will stabilize this area. And meanwhile, while that's been going on, this single siege tank has been sieged up by Wreckwool and has stopped the mining of the minerals at uh, Wizard's natural base. Cyanic storing being used to try to counter the single siege tank and that will work um, for two uh, storms themselves. <coughs> More units starting to flow in up here but not going to do anything against Wreckwool's defensive line. Meanwhile, down here at the very bottom, Wreckwool has dropped off two tanks. Uh, the space here is under heavy siege. The reinforcement zealots should be able to force this dropship away, but not before interrupting mining once again and allowing Wreckwool to uh, put more pressure on Wizard to try to make Wizard not feel like he's safe. So 102 to 100, or sorry, 102 to 61 supply. So the supply differential is very high at the moment, though. So um, despite all the moves Recruit has been making, uh, he's not been able to keep up quite as much in macro, maybe because of the fact that he does have less resources. And this dropship does look like it's going to go down, or not. So uh, this area up here does look like it's starting to be cleaned up a bit. Uh, these missile turrets um, not going to uh, be able to stand up against the combined might of a Zealot and a Dragoon. I don't see... Uh, Recruil is starting to harass with vultures, but I don't see any continued follow-up pressure coming out of him to continue that ledge push. No additional bases coming out either, uh, so it looks like he is uh, all in on a single base. Um, it is worth mentioning again that Wreckful was a random player and not a chosen Terran. There was a game earlier where he played Zerg, so it's not surprising that he might have a bit of trouble trying to keep up in the macro late game, um, as he would oftentimes rely upon early cheesier strats to gain a little bit of an edge to make up for the fact that he uh, doesn't know the races as well as somebody who dedicated themselves to just playing that race over and over again. Continued Vulture Harass. And it looks like it's about 70 food to 136, so it looks like this game will likely be wrapping up unless Wreck Bull pulls up pulls off something quite amazing. So, um, <clears throat> we'll follow this game um, as it ends out and as it plays out and see if Rekful can make something happen, but while he comes off with his final death push, I will reintroduce the players one last time. Uh, so this was Rekful, uh playing in the CompUSA uh, $20,000 tournament ladder, uh, trying to qualify the top 64 bracket. Um, he would actually play in the LAN event, the Million Man LAN, uh, later on, the same year, a few months later, uh, where he would get fourth place. Uh, and he was first place at the WCG USA 2003, the first year in um, three years that Froz had not won the event. And Recruel was this handsome young lad right here. So, final push coming up from Recruel as he tries to keep his uh, game life alive. Storms and dropped off Archons seem to be cleaning things up quite nicely though. Uh, we do have an expansion established though for his mineral only during that attack, but uh, his forces are crushed unfortunately. And the one who did the crushing, uh, being Wizard, who was second place WCUSA 2002 with Frost taking first and Ware taking third, uh, ended up fifth place in this tournament itself uh, for $500. And uh, he's the center guy in this WCG 2002 photo with uh, Ware on the left and Froz on the right. So 
so <coughs> things have uh, slowed down a little bit again. Um, Wizard not wanting to continue to attack into Rekvul's defensive positions as that has not worked out that well for him. And Rekvul not quite having the supply to move forward and attack uh, Wizard's defensive positions either. It does look like there is a Stargate up. Uh, I'll try to see if I can see what he might be using the Stargate for. Don't see a um, Leap Beacon. Upgrade wise, uh, Wizard is at 2-1. Uh, Rekvul is at 0-0, zero, zero, so the upgrades also are favoring Wizard at this point with a much more durable and stronger army uh, as those upgrades are really important uh, in the larger armor and army battles. Two more Stargates going up, so again, because of the fact that Protoss would never go Arbiters during this period in time, uh, Wizard's late game generally, like many Protosses, was just to get a bunch of carriers. Uh, so he's prepared that if the ground army of his is defeated, he's going to switch it all to carrier supply instead and try to win the game that way, since Siege takes can't attack carriers. Uh, so he's pushing in here. Um, Near, it was originally near max supply, he's now about to 148. Uh, trying to see if he can break through Rekvul's defensive positioning. It does look like the natural here has been successfully broken through. There are additional siege tanks in the back, but they're out of position. Uh, he's heading up the ramp, uh, following the SCV train. Uh, storms blanketing the area. It's looking, looking more and more like this is going to be it. Oof. That natural is going to go down. So this looks pretty bad for Rekvul at the moment. Uh, Wizard is floating about uh, 2,000 minerals, but it doesn't really matter because Rekvul only has a mineral only base and only has 73 supply. Uh, so... This does not look good at all. Uh, even if he cru cru crushes this army, he just doesn't have the supply to really push that advantage. Uh, it doesn't look like he has the ability to even stop this army in the first place. So this is his final mining base going down. See, storms are destroying the tanks on the ledge. The final SCVs are giving their life for their Terran overlords. And that's it. So that was uh, Power of G squared, uh, otherwise known as Wizard versus uh, NBR Rec Roll. Um, <clears throat> we have t three games remaining in this broadcast. 